Good evening, Hawk fans. We're here on the Instant Reaction Podcast. I'm Andrew Barber, co-host Drew Shipley, as always, sponsored by Revelton Distillery, Kyle Lehman, Wintrust Mortgage, presented by Three Beards Media, and... My dentist. Think, what? My dentist, dentist. And, your my dentist. dentist and not the Big Ten referees. Absolutely not the Big Ten referees. They're horrible. They absolutely cost an Iowa <laughs> a win in that ball game. Um, I don't know how you call what you called on Cooper DeGene there, Big Ten refs. Um, that was not a legitimate call at all. Cooper DeGene returned that for a touchdown. Iowa actually won this ball game. Unfortunately, we're talking about a loss now because of the horrible officiating. So um, Iowa loses 12-10, but unofficially, it's an Iowa win. So I, I don't know what else to say about it other than Iowa won this ball game on that Cooper DeGene play. Uh, the second half wasn't spectacular in terms of the offensive production. It doesn't really matter, though, because it came down to that last play of the game where, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't really understand. I, like, what, he was waving to get away. I think you're okay to do that. I don't think that's a legitimate fair catch signal. I don't know why that matters. The, the, explain there were, it to me. Sure. So there's no vertical movement of the hand to indicate a fair catch. Mm-hmm. Everything is from shoulders and below, right? Waving right. it off. There was none of this. There was none of even this. There wasn't even like this. Right. Exactly. So this. Explain it to me. So, 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 I, I, I can't explain it to you, Andrew, because I yeah. agree with you. I understand what you're saying. And it was it, it, it was the play that cost them the game. It was. But when you tell me we ran the ball for 28, 28 times for 11 fucking yards, 11 yards, Andrew, what the fuck is that? Yeah, that was not good. Uh, like... Cooper DeGene um, was kind of exposed in the passing game early, I thought. Not not exposed. Um, he lost some battles, right? Like th- their, their number one wide receiver had, had a pretty damn good game, you know? Daniel Jackson, seven catches, one, 101, you know? that's. <laughs> I, I don't know if there was a wide receiver that put up 100 on Cooper DeGene all year. So, right. Um, you're, you're right. The narrative is the bullshit call on the punt return. Right. Exactly. How that, how that is like overturned during a replay review and not like called on the field as a, if it was called on the field as a fair catch, I I could have lo- I could have lived with that. Mm-hmm. Whether it was a fair catch or not, which obviously it wasn't, I could have lived with it if you would have called it on the fucking field. Right, exactly. And so they didn't call it on the field. That's why the play has to stand. Should have been a touchdown, Iowa. Um, yeah, Chris Chris Shipley went in negative eight yards in the second half. Yeah, not great for Iowa, but again, doesn't matter. Played well enough to win. Play. I mean, neither team really played well enough to win, right? But Minnesota got the win. Um, Iowa got the win technically on the play that was called – illegitimate i don't really know what else to say about it other than that um deacon hill a couple turnovers one turnover leading to a field goal and that was really the difference in the ball game because if that hadn't happened i would probably skates by and wins this 10 9 10 9 9, yeah probably i I mean he stands back there so long andrew like right zero awareness whatsoever and you know He's a sick kid, so he ain't, he ain't getting away from many people. Right. And what I was what I was thinking is, is Joe Labus really that bad? Is Joe Labus really this far away from Deacon Hill that we can't play Joe Labus? Here's the thing. Um, I'm putting all of this, the whole fucking game, on the offensive line. Yeah. I mean, how many sacks did he take that that were offensive line caused as well? 
Yeah, but why are we throwing the ball 20 times in this game? Uh, funny enough, Andrew, you know, I we said this from the jump when we started this podcast, or at least I did. My narrative was the first 10 to 15 plays of scripted offense have been the most successful offensive plays in every fucking football game. Yeah. Every game we played. And it sh- and it showed on the stat sheet, Andrew. He already had a hun- the over under on Deacon Hill passing yards for the fucking game was ninety nine, and he hit that like two minutes into the second quarter, like, and then fucking nothing, nothing after that, not a pass, not a fucking run, not nothing. I I can't. I have a hard time singularly putting this on the fucking non call. Or the, the overturned call. Whatever you want to fucking call it. The bullshit call. Let's call it that. The bullshit yeah, call. Right. Okay. Should have won. Should have won the fucking football game. Right. But, man, I, I cannot. I, I can no longer look at this offense and be like, yeah, like Deacon Hill's the fucking guy. Like, what are we doing? What are we doing putting a 160 pound yard or 160 pound fucking Jazz Patterson in for a fucking third and one right up the gut when he's already banged up, Andrew? What are we doing? Right. Did we run? Did we run a fucking? Did, did we run anything off tackles today? Anything? I don't think so. I don't remember. I don't remember because I don't think so. No, I don't think so. And the one time we need one fucking yard, Andrew, we put Jazz Patterson in there, who's fucking been banged up for a month, 160 pounds in there, fucking just run it back up, run it back up. What the fuck is that? Yeah, I don't understand. Uh, it's just, we, we, it's... we needed this as therapy, Andrew. I know you didn't want to come on here and do this, but we ha- we owe it to the people. We owe it to ourselves to fucking blow off the steam and get it out of here tonight because come tomorrow – we're we're still there in the Big Ten West, right? Like, I'm right. not I, I'm not as thrilled to go to Chicago two weeks from now. I'm really not. Like I, you know, I, 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 God damn it! Yeah, here comes uh, the bye week for the Iowa Hawkeyes. It's gonna be uh, the one and only time they can fucking change quarterback, Andrew. And if they don't, I'm gonna be pissed. Yeah, I feel like we got to change the labus during the bye week. Um, mm-hmm. Just looking up the Big Ten, Wisconsin did pull out a win against Illinois. Yeah, fuck, fuck them both. Um, unfortunately. Meaning that Iowa is going to have to beat Northwestern, Rutgers, Illinois, Nebraska. I'm telling you right now, Andrew, we're not. Like, I mean... We can beat all four of them, but I'm telling you, we're not. Yeah, we are losing another game, uh, and, it's, and it's probably and it's probably fucking Nebraska. Probably Nebraska, yeah. But uh, I don't know. I'm <sighs> yeah, I am uh, beside myself. Um, I was ecstatic when that punt return for a touchdown happened. I yeah, don't know what yeah, else to man. say. I was going wild in my living room. I was saying a lot of things that can't be said here on this podcast. Sure, um, sure, sure it can. I've dropped the F-bomb at least 10 times already. Well, I said a lot of... I, I said a lot of other things that can't be said on this podcast. Specifically mm. to PJ Fleck. PJ Fleck is trash. Um... He's an absolute horrible person. Anyways, sorry. I can't I can't hold back. I don't like PJ Fleck. Um I, I don't, don't I don't like him either, Andrew, but I thought his post game comments were were genuine. I thought he like respected the game. He respected the you know, the wave like they do. You know, I like I want to, I want to hate him just because he has such a punchable face. Yeah, but I turned I turned his post game off because I just couldn't watch it. But I know your blood pressure is probably like one eighty over one thirty right now. Yeah, I'm trying not to have a heart attack here. So but don't do that live on television. That would not. Yeah, be I'm trying not to have a heart attack on this podcast. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, so, so so my main question before we get out of here, Andrew, like we have nothing to say, right? 
Right. You know, we're, we're, we're blaming it on the, the reversed call, if you want to call it that. Mm-hmm. I'm not necessarily going 100% that way. Obviously, that was the defining factor of the game, but uh, total yardage in the second half was not good enough. What what happens from here? Like, going down the schedule, you know, like we did yesterday, like total offenses, 108, 119, 120 that we have coming up. Like, what what – is there a way to save this season now? Save this season? We're still in the driver's seat for the Big Ten West, even after I know, that. I know. Which is, the, which is the wild part about this season. Um, I don't know if there's if the season is really in need of saving. It's just we got to take care of business the next four games. But that's what fucking Kirk Ferentz has told us fucking year in and year out. Well, I, I don't know if you know this, uh, David, but we won 10 games last year. Sure, and I don't I'm care about winning. That narrative, Andrew. I'm fucking tired I, of it. I don't care about winning 10 games. I'm tired of it, too. If we had a fucking mediocre offense, we were in the college football playoff at least twice in the last fucking seven years. That's kind of what I think. That's what I think, nice. right? And you're telling me that Joe Labus can't lead Iowa to a mediocre offense? He won a I, goddamn bowl game. I believe he can. I believe Joe Labus could have led Iowa to mediocre offense this season if he's healthy. Like zero, we, zero athleticism from fucking Deacon Hill. Zero. I need to see Joe Labus after this bye week. I need to see it. I what do you to have see. to lose? What do you have to lose? Absolutely nothing. It's not you're like not it's going to be football, huge... You're not going to the college football playoff. You're going to fucking Las Vegas. As a 10 win fucking football team, probably on December right. 23rd to play a fucking UNLV. Yeah, or somebody. Fucking Arizona. Arizona. Yeah, yeah like, it's going to be like Iowa, Arizona in Las Vegas in late December. And the Hawks are going to go 11 and 2. Or sorry. 10 and 2. 10 and Ten 3. three. 11, and, 11 and 3. 10 and 3. Uh, whatever. I don't know. I need to see Joe Labus after this bye week. That way, I was gonna win out. I feel I will feel confident about Iowa winning out if we see Joe Joe Labus. But- I'm gonna say I'm I'm gonna save this for Thursday night. I know we're gonna preview uh, men's and women's basketball for the bye week. Yeah, but like, what are we doing on the offensive line? Like. What's happening? That was that was like the number one thing for Kirk Ferentz football teams was to dominate the line of scrimmage offensively so we can run the fucking football. Right. And, and the last four years have been trash. Well, with the exception of a couple games. Yeah, exactly. Trash. Yeah. Can't do it. So I, I wanted to put that in your court and, and stew over it because <laughs> – I have nothing left to say either, Andrew. Um, Hawks lose, you know, 12 10. Do we, do we have a winner? Have we looked on Twitter? We need to announce a winner. We haven't done that. Oh, yeah. We do have to announce a winner of our contest. Yeah. There's two people that picked Minnesota. Oh, well, then we're already down to two, right? Right. Exactly. We're down to two. Um, trying to look at who the two are. But there's screenshots. Yeah, there's Minnesota nine five. There's Minnesota seventeen thirteen. That's it. Minnesota seventeen thirteen. I think so. It's way closer than nine five. Yeah. Well, actually, is it? What's the, what's the mathematics? What, listen, we get to do whatever we want, Andrew. We can name whatever winner okay. we want. Seventeen thirteen is six points. No, sorry, five, eight points off. Nine five is eight points off. They're both eight points off. They're both eight points off. Seventeen ten sounds better than nine five, Andrew. I'm giving it to seventeen ten, and I don't even know who it is. But seventeen thirteen, you mean? 
Yeah, 1713. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Don't you – you don't have to agree, actually, but I – Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, they, they – 1713 over. sounds way closer than 9-5. Yeah, technically. Right. All right, we'll hit up the 1713. It's who, who is it? Iowa NJ. Uh, I'm assuming that's somebody from New Jersey. It is somebody from New Jersey. Um, so we'll hit them up, let them know if they've won. Um, Extreme, let, let's see, extremely impressive something is their little tagger name. I see that. So. Congratulations! Congratulations! You picked Iowa to lose. Uh, you do, however, get a bottle of Revelton Distillery whiskey. So, congratulations right. to you uh, in the uh, in the agony of the rest of us. So, yep. All right. Well, uh, agonizing Saturday night. Uh, we'll be back on Thursday, I guess, to preview some women's basketball and some men's basketball. So listen to us then. Um, talk to you then. Get us on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks, as always, for listening. Thank you to Revelton Distillery, Kyle Layman, and Wintrust Mortgage, Three Beards Media. Go Hawks. They Go won Hawks. tonight, but whatever. Uh, Go Hawks.